This film shows you how to set up and operate the Periflux 6000 instrument from Perimed. Transcutaneous oximetry, also known as TCOM or TCPO2, measures the oxygen tension in the skin. It is a useful tool to determine if a wound is likely to heal. In this video, we show you step by step how to achieve a complete clinical investigation of the wound healing capacity using the Periflux 6000. Start the Periflux 6000 by plugging the electrode into the socket at the back of the instrument. Make sure the color coding of the cable matches the color coding of the socket. Then place the electrode head in the holder and secure it with the lock. You can connect up to eight electrodes to the system. Power up the unit by pressing the switch at the back. This takes about a minute. You'll have the option to connect a keyboard, mouse and printer. When ready, the power indicators illuminate and a test tone sounds. It's now time to calibrate the instrument. Before calibrating, the electrode temperature should reach 45 degrees Celsius. You can always check the current temperature on the screen. Lower temperatures can be used. See the manual for further information. Calibrate all the electrodes by pressing CAL. This should take only a couple of minutes. To calibrate specific electrodes, simply check or uncheck them. You should perform a calibration before each monitoring period, when changing patients or changing sites, and every time an electrode is remembraned. Calibration OK indicates that the electrode is now ready to be placed on the patient. For calibration when using mono and multi-place hyperbaric chambers, refer to the manual for details. For optimal results, TCP02 measurements should be made with the patient at rest in a supine position. The patient should not speak during the examination. Keep the patient and extremity warm. Tap the patient's tab. Choose an existing patient from the list or create a new entry. You may then tap the clinical information icon to enter relevant information about the patient. Now place the electrodes on the patient. It's useful to place several electrodes around the wound. To map the extremity, place electrodes below the knee down to the foot. As a reference, you might consider placing an electrode on the opposite foot. When placing electrodes, try to avoid bony prominences, large superficial vessels, calloused skin, the plantar surface of the foot, and infected or inflamed areas close to the wound. Also avoid areas of heavy edema. To ensure an airtight seal, remove hair at the chosen sites. Then blot with medical tape such as transpore to remove dry skin. Change and repeat until the tape appears clean. Finally, wipe with alcohol to make sure all creams and oils are removed. Next, attach the fixation rings to the skin, either TC550 or extra strength adhesive TC555. Place the ring on the patient and make sure you have good adhesion around the ring to create the important airtight seal. Add three to five drops of contact liquid. Insert the electrode head. To lock it in place, turn it a quarter turn clockwise so that the arrow aligns with the tab on the ring. Secure the cable with tape. For accurate data interpretation and follow-up measurements, it's important to document the electrode positions. Take a digital photo, connect the camera to the USB port, and tap the camera icon. You may zoom by clicking on the plus and minus symbols, or rotate the image with the arrow. Indicate the sights by tapping and dragging the target icon over each electrode. 
If you're not able to take a photo, select an illustration from the library. Give each channel a name by either using the defaults or entering free text. Make sure that the color coding is correct. Tap back to the main tab. Click on Start and choose one of the tests designed for you by Perimed. Then follow the step-by-step -step instructions. Remember that it takes 15 minutes to get a stable TCP02 baseline value. The transcutaneous oxygen tension in a healthy person is about 70 millimeters of mercury or 50 millimeters of mercury on the foot. Values lower than 40 millimeters of mercury are associated with impaired wound healing, and values lower than 30 millimeters of mercury and often less than 20 millimeters of mercury are indicative of critical limb ischemia. Now the baseline measurement is complete. At this point, you can extend the test with additional steps or provocations. We'll cover provocations later in this video. When you're satisfied with the run, tap Finish. The report is now automatically shown on screen. Click on the summary icon to enter additional comments about the run. You may always go back to the main, patient or sites tab to edit any information. Finally, the report can be saved as a PDF file or printed. Now is a good time to remove the electrodes from the patient and place them in the electrode holders. For correct clinical diagnosis, it's important to fully understand your TCP02 results. Peripheral arterial disease or capillary impairment will both yield low TCP02 values. However, so will cardiopulmonary disease, edema, infection, or inflammation. Here, we will describe the leg elevation test and the oxygen challenge provocations that will support the understanding of your TCP02 results. The Periflux 6000 software will guide you step by step. The leg elevation test is a simple way to screen for macrovascular disease. It's usually done directly after the baseline measurement. Elevate the leg to a 30 degree angle, preferably using a wedge pillow, for 5 to 15 minutes. A drop of more than 10 millimeters of mercury, or more than 20% from baseline, indicates the possibility of macrovascular disease. Another test is the oxygen challenge. The patient breathes 100% oxygen in a non-rebreathing mask to discriminate if low TCPO2 values are caused by vascular disease or by edema or inflammation. Use a securely fitted mask. Use a pulse oximeter to verify both cardiopulmonary performance as well as the NRB mask function. Perform the test whenever you obtain a baseline value below 50 millimeters of mercury. If the oxygen challenge reports values higher than 100 millimeters of mercury or more than 100% increase from baseline, the low baseline value was caused by edema or inflammation and not by PAD or capillary impairment. This also means that the patient may respond well to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Remember that patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease should not be subjected to an oxygen challenge. Now let's go through some basic maintenance and cleaning. Clean electrodes with a moist cloth, then move on to proper disinfection procedures. Avoid exposing the electrode cable to any product based on isopropanol, propyl alcohol, or alcohol, as prolonged exposure to these products may damage the electrode cable. Please refer to the manual for complete instructions on cleaning and maintenance. For longer storage, Put several drops of contact liquid in the protective cap before placing the cap on the electrode. During use, electrodes build up a layer of silver oxide that must be removed. This is easily done during remembraning, which should be carried out on a weekly basis. It's advisable to change the membrane after contact with infectious disease. First, remove the old O-rings using the O-ring removal tool. 
Next, take a piece of tape, touch the corner of the tape to the membrane surface and lift the membrane right off. Clean the electrode surface using the special cleaning paper in the membraning kit. Polish the surface thoroughly with the paper to remove tarnish. Fold another piece of cleaning paper and clean inside the groove around the electrode head. Add two large drops of electrolyte solution from the bottle to the surface. Move the tip of the bottle into the solution to get rid of air bubbles. Place the membrane unit on a flat surface. Turn the electrode and place it into the top of the membrane unit. Press the electrode firmly until you feel it snap into place. Remove the electrode and wipe off any surplus electrolyte with a soft tissue. Inspect the electrode to make sure that there are no air bubbles. Place the electrode in the electrode holder. Remember that the electrodes need to be calibrated twice after remembraning. For additional information on the clinical uses of transcutaneous oximetry, please view the video by Caroline Fife on the Paramed homepage.